Tomo News presents Museums. Parenting fail. An ordinary day at a museum in the UK went horribly wrong when a family's failed photo op damaged an 800-year-old coffin. According to the BBC, on August 4th, a family was visiting Pretty Well Priory Museum in Southend-on-Sea. Hoping to snap a morbid photo, the parents reportedly reached over an exhibit barrier to put their child inside an 800-year-old ancient sandstone coffin. Ah, you know this isn't gonna end well. Here's some quick facts about the stone coffin. It was found on the grounds of the monk's residence in 1921 and has been displayed at the Pretty Well Priory Museum ever since. It used to contain a skeleton that the museum says could have belonged to a senior monk, so arguably it's a valuable artifact. Well, in the process of picture taken, the offending family managed to knock a chunk off of the sarcophagus. <sighs> Fantastic. They didn't say a word and fled the scene, but were caught on the museum's surveillance cameras. In response to the photo op incident, Pretty Well Priory Museum's conservator Claire Reed said the staff was shocked and upset, but added that the damage was repairable. The museum said they didn't expect people to actually get into the artifacts, and they plan to completely enclose the stone coffin in the future. Uh, she might want to improve her selfie game. This woman will probably think twice before she snaps selfies in the future, since when she did so last Thursday in a Los Angeles art gallery, the result was 200,000 US dollars in damages. The woman was viewing an installation called Hypercane, which was a collaboration between Hong Kong artist Simon Birch and other artists including Gabriel Chan, Jacob Blitzer, and Gloria Yu. Prior to the incident, CCTV footage showed visitors carefully admiring and walking around a room decorated with dozens of rectangular pedestals holding sculpted crowns and other headpieces. Then came the clumsy visitor and her friend. Her friend used an actual camera to photograph the wondrous works. Meanwhile, the clumsy one decided to squat down and snap her selfie, which led to her falling backward into one of the displays, turning the entire exhibition into a game of dominoes. Yikes! After wrecking much of the exhibition, the bumbling visitor actually remained calm and even put one headpiece back onto its pedestal. According to the exhibition's marketing team, three of the sculptures were permanently damaged and others to varying degrees. Factoring in the artist's work time, potential art sales lost, and the repair costs, the estimated damage came out to a total bill of $200,000. Some had speculated the incident was a stunt, but the exhibition confirmed to Fox News that the accident was real and explained it would be irrational for the artist to damage their own work in the hopes of gaining more fame. The art show is already back on display with one change. Visitors can no longer walk between the rows of art pieces, though photography is still encouraged. One and a half million dollar painting ruined by a Taiwanese boy's fall. An exhibition of classic Italian Renaissance paintings in Taipei, Taiwan is getting international attention. Only it's not because of the impressive artwork, but rather the poor protection of the pieces and the clumsiness of a 12 year old boy who poked a hole in one of the paintings when he tripped over the protective barrier. The boy was visiting Huashan 1914 Creative Park with his mother on Sunday to see the Face of Leonardo Images of a Genius exhibit. The exhibition poster ironically features a self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci that is scratched. The boy was taking a guided tour of the exhibit and stopped to admire a 350-year-old Paolo Porpora oil on canvas painting entitled Flowers. As the group was moving to the next piece in the collection, the boy tripped and broke his fall with the still light. In hindsight, the gallery probably should have put up more protection around the valuable works of art. What were they thinking? But lucky for the boy, the work was insured, and although he was reportedly nervous, he won't have to pay for any damage, which is limited to a fist-sized hole in the canvas. The curator of the exhibition is working on getting the painting restored before it is sent back to Italy. The exhibition features more than 50 paintings dating from the Italian Renaissance through the 20th century. Engineer falls through floor in Rodin Museum, receives $7.25 million settlement. Fanny Gathula has endured a lot of pain since his near-fatal accident in Philadelphia's Rodin Museum a few years ago. Now, his lawyers have managed to negotiate a fat settlement to cushion his nasty fall. On November 26, 2012, Gathula was conducting an energy audit of the building as an engineer for ICF International. The museum had just undergone major renovations. A security guard allowed him access to a glass-paneled floor section of the museum to inspect the light fixtures in the attic area. But as he was doing so, the floor gave way, and the 27-year-old found himself falling 38 feet down to the ground. As you can see in this video, 
he very nearly lands on top of a sculpture. Luckily, if you can call it lucky, he missed it, but the fall still left Cthulhu with fractures to his femur, hip, pelvis, rib, and elbow, as well as other traumatic injuries. He was hospitalized for 45 days and still isn't able to walk properly. For failure to protect him from harm, the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the security company involved have reached a $7.25 million settlement with his attorneys, which should make him feel a little bit better about things. Europe gets its first underwater museum. A museum featuring more than 300 sculptures open to the public this week, 14 meters beneath the sea. The Museo Atlantico Underwater Museum is located off the south coast of Lazarote in Spain's Canary Islands. The museum is the first of its kind in Europe. The 2,500 square meter site is best explored by scuba diving around it. But if you don't want to strap on a wetsuit and oxygen tank, then it can also be viewed through a glass bottom boat. The permanent sculptures are the work of British artist Jason Taylor. All the sculptures have been made with high density pH neutral concrete and no corrosive metals. That's so the artworks don't damage the marine ecosystem and will encourage life to prosper in the area, which is a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. Some of the works carry a political message, such as this piece depicting migrants crossing the Mediterranean Sea. The artist said it was a tribute to migrants who succeeded, but also to those whose dreams and hopes remain at the bottom of the sea. Taylor said he hoped the museum would foster a better understanding of the marine environment and how much we depend on it. His first underwater exhibition was in Grenada in the Caribbean more than a decade ago. In 2009, Taylor followed that up with an installation at the Cancun Underwater Museum of Art in Mexico. In 2014, this 60-ton sculpture by Taylor became the largest ever installed underwater when it made its debut in Nassau in the Bahamas. Taylor spent the past two years living in Lanzarote, creating artworks for the museum, and started dropping sculptures onto the seabed about a year ago. Hmm, wonder if fish like art. Genius Thief Steals Fake Gold Bars from Museum A masked man broke into Japan's Yunoku Museum of Gold Mining and stole the museum's fake display bars of gold. Many gold mines were operated in that area of Japan during the 15th and 17th centuries. The masked burglars seemed to have caught the area's famous gold fever and snuck into the museum to steal the gold in the display case. Unfortunately, the gold on display was fake, and the same fake gold bars can be purchased in the museum gift shop for 32 US dollars apiece. Well, he's in for a surprise when he realizes he's stolen some very shiny paperweights. Please do not touch the exhibits. An easy enough rule to follow, but seemingly too tough for one American tourist to knock the finger off a 600-year-old Italian statue at a museum in Florence. Patrick Broderick, a 55-year-old emergency surgeon from Connecticut, his wife and kids were strolling through the northern city's Museum of the Works of the Cathedral when one statue caught his eye. The curious doctor raised his hand to the 14th century Virgin Mary to compare hand sizes, and in that instant, amputated her right pinky. Furious museum staff fingered the man to police, who promptly arrested him in front of his wife and children. As one can tell from the metal pin jutting from the stump, the finger had previously been repaired after an earlier mishap and was probably already fragile to begin with. Do you think it's fair he was arrested? 13 people injured and museum experiments gone wrong. A routine experiment at a science museum in Reno, Nevada went terribly wrong, causing a chemical flash that injured 13 people mostly children. Museum staffers were trying to create a spoke tornado to explain the formation of tornadoes to a group of children accompanied by adults. When a faulty mixture of methyl alcohol and boric acid used in the experiment caused a chemical flash. The victims suffered chemical burns on their hands, arms, and faces. The museum building was not damaged in the mishap. More famous tourist sites and museums ban selfie sticks. Selfie sticks are the narcissist's favorite weapon of choice. The extendable arms with a clamp on one end of the phone and a grip on the other have become wildly popular since they hit the market early last year. They've also become an annoyance. Wandering through a plaza of tourists, all wielding selfie sticks can be compared to maneuvering through a room full of blindfolded fencers. The Colosseum in Rome is one of many tourist sites across Europe that have banned selfie sticks. Following a recent episode that saw two American tourists carve their initials into a wall and then take pictures of themselves using a selfie stick. The two women were part of a tour group but had wandered off on their own. All alone and lacking adult supervision, the two decided it would be a good idea to deface a piece of history for a selfie. 
Museum authorities say that the selfie stick is banned for the safety and protection of all tourists, as well as the art. Several museums have already banned tripods and flash photography, or just the taking of photos, period. Looks like tourists are just going to have to rely on that old-fashioned selfie stick we had to use back in the old days. Your arm. A monster sinkhole opened up at the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky in the early hours of Wednesday morning, swallowing eight rare sports cars. The hole, estimated to be around 30 foot deep and 40 foot wide, opened up inside the Sky Dome area of the museum. No injuries were reported. Of the eight vehicles swallowed by the hungry earth, two, a 2009 ZR1 Blue Devil and a 1993 ZR1 Spider, were on loan from the Corvette company. While the other six damaged vehicles were owned by the museum, they include a 1984 PPG Pace car, a 1962 black Corvette, a 1992 white 1 millionth Corvette, and a 2009 white 1.5 millionth Corvette. The Sky Dome is now off limits to visitors while the museum figures out how the hell it's going to get eight cars out of a whopping great 30 foot deep hole. The rest of the museum remains open to visitors. A Miami artist was arrested on Sunday after breaking a $1 million vase by Chinese dissident artist Ai Weiwei displayed at Miami's Perez Art Museum. Artist Maximo Caminero entered the museum, approached a display of 16 vases by Chinese dissident artist Ai Weiwei and took one of the vases in his hands. A museum security guard saw him and asked him to put it down. Instead, he threw it onto the floor. Caminero was arrested and charged with criminal mischief. The 16 vases dripped in bright paint by Ai are about 2,000 years old, dating back to China's Han Dynasty. Four rhino heads were nicked from the storeroom of Ireland's National Museum last night. Three masked men, taught to be travellers, entered the storeroom where the heads were put for safekeeping. Apparently this kind of thing happens a lot. The scoundrels tied up the poor guard on duty, then helped themselves to the heads. They unloaded the gear into a white van and drove off. After the fact, the guard got loose and sounded the alarm. Authorities reckon that traveller boys from Ratkeel are behind the gig. They'll likely be wanting to sell the horns to Asians who think the powder you can make from it has got medicinal properties.